seen anything like that. Wide right. Little roller up along first. Behind the bag. It gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. The band is out on the field. He's going to go in the end zone. He's going to go in the end zone. The Bears have won. The Bears have won. Oh, my God. The Davy Mac Sports Program, where we talk the sports and other stuff like powder. Easy rule to remember, kids. Black powder goes into your gun and white powder goes up your nose. And don't mix that up, you little brats. I'm Roy Harder, and here's your host, Mr. Eastside David McDonald, baby. There he is. Uh, thank you, Roy. For that introduction of what was it? Black powder in your gun, white powder in your nose. And this, that's right, David. This was, was a uh, this was a uh, lesson for kids, for Today? children. That's how yes. you start the show. That's I how figured... you start the goddamn legendary Davy Mac Sports Program with a goddamn fucking weird ass NBC, and that's one to grow on message that'll send well, you and I to fucking prison for seven to ten, my friend. Well, I figured you guys already knew that rules, so the kids didn't. So. I understand, but let's not be te- Listen, we have a very busy show, Roy Harder. Um, we, sure do. we have a legend standing by. We're going to get to him right away. When I think of movies, when I think of um, Hollywood, when I think of success, I say, Steven Spielberg, fuck you. I say, George mm. Lucas, fuck you. Yeah. I say, when it comes to movies, television, and Hollywood, there is no bigger star than the io9 film critic, the legendary media journalist, the one and only Jermaine G-Baby LaSia. What an introduction. Thank you so much for having me back, you guys. I appreciate it. And uh, you, you flatter me. You flatter me. You know, Jermaine, it's wonderful to have you on the show. You are one of those uh, wonderful people like Billy Mitchell that we scratch our heads and wonder why does Jermaine keep coming on with the insane Roy intros and some of the questions that either Roy or Big A Andrew Gold have asked uh, both you and Billy in the past uh, and Chris Pepper Stanley and some others. Um, I know that's why Chris Pepper Stanley's not on a weekly basis. He's, he's, (laughs) he's, you know, he's, he's dialed it back to once a month, but that's actually a shocker for us where we're like, holy shit. Okay. What a get, Chris Pepper Hex. I, yeah, what a get. Yeah. I mean, come 12 on. times a year. We can all look forward to that. He can't hang out on Zoom <laughs> for one fucking hour. But uh, we are so pleased as punch to have you, Jermaine. Your things are looking uh, great for you still. I still follow you. I read all your stuff. Um, where can people read all of Jermaine Lassier? Yeah, I write, a, I write on uh, io9.com, which is part of gizmodo.com. And that's where you see me writing about Marvel and DC and Star Wars and avatar and god knows what whatever comes up i'm I'm on top of it so uh yeah and i would say i'd plug my twitter but who knows if that's going to exist in the next couple of weeks (laughs) oh yeah but uh you know i'm still hanging out on there and on instagram and stuff at my full name jermaine lucier all right um robert were you gonna say something no sir oh no okay sorry i was trying to set things up i apologize oh no no the way you were holding the microphone it's okay robert um hey uh jermaine so we're gonna be doing some sports but we're also going to be doing some movies, and a little bit of the television as well. We're going to be hitting the big topics, Love your it. Star Wars, your Marvels, your some of this. But we're also going to be going in and out of conversation. OK, I hope you're OK with that. You are a sports fan, though. I'm a huge sports fan. I'm one of the few people, you know, if I tweet like, you know, like Andor was awesome last night. It's like 900 likes. So I'm like, I hated that Champions League draw this morning. It's like zero. <laughs> It's just like mm-hmm. crickets. No, nobody cares about my sports stuff. New York Giants doing great. Like two, two likes. No <laughs> yeah. You are, you're a, you're in all things football. That's American football. And then that's the chintzy little European football where no one gets tackled. Where they, you know, they, all, all they do is kick around some, like a melon for 90 minutes. I mean, well, let's be honest. Real football, people get tackled. People wear helmets. The um, fun little European football, you know, dainty. Guy gets kicked in the shins. He falls down you know, complains, rolls around for uh, five to seven minutes. 
Jermaine, tell me I'm not wrong here. No, but I'll tell you this. Believe it or not, I'm just joking. I actually get into World Cup and Olympic soccer in a huge way. And yeah. this year, the um, World Cup is back. In, it's back in uh, November. And, uh, I think two weeks it starts from uh, – it's November 7th now, and I think it starts on the 21st. Uh, I can't wait. That, this is what got me into soccer. Like, I would watch the World Cup every year. And the last World Cup, what, four years ago, four and a half years ago, I was like, well, like, where do these guys go after that? And obviously I knew they're professionals. You hear, you've heard of like your Manchester United's, your Barcelona's, right? But then I started like getting into it um, and, and kind of following that more. And now, yeah, I spend my Saturday and Sunday mornings watching Premier League before the NFL. I watch the Champions League, which is kind of the European mega tournament on Tuesday and Wednesdays, like during the work day. You know, I, I've been up at three o'clock in the morning to go to an event you know, Jesus, and drink. Jermaine, Jermaine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jermaine, I'm, I'm Jermaine, big into. I should have... actually. I forgot. I, I wanted to wear my USA football kit for the, might... the, the program, but I forgot. That's what a uh, <laughs> a, a jersey is called with these the kit people. Is the, kit is the full. Uh, the, it's called the shirt. Uh, the full uh, outfit is called the the kit. Yes. Oh, the full outfit. So so wait a second. You're you're yes. telling me you have a full. USA soccer. No, I, just I just had the shirt. I just had the shirt. I just had the shirt. I'll no. tell you what, though. What an Instagram picture that would be. You get yourself some shin guards, some right. cleats. You go the whole nine <laughs> yards, baby. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they honestly don't make uh, soccer jerseys in like double XL for European. So, uh, oh, come on. Double MLS XL. does, though. MLS, I can get that. No problem. I got Jermaine, my I like Galaxy jersey. This is why I'm the crossover master. This is yeah. why I am the pop culture master. This is why no one can talk sports, movies, television, wrestling the way I can, because I can weave them in seamlessly. Love it. Now, Jermaine, renowned film critic, what's the best soccer movie of all time? Because guess what, brother? I've got one right here on the top of my head, and you saw the show prep. This wasn't something I came in with. It's just baby Davy Mac off the cuff, daddy. Yeah. Fuck I, it. I, I, and suck it. And fuck it. Nice. Nah, <laughs> we fuck. We suck. Oh, sorry, Jermaine. Uh, I, th I think of you saying that more often than I'd like to admit. <laughs> like, suck it and fuck it. Every time I hear it, I just think of, I think of you, Davey Mack. Roy, right? um, I Jermaine goes back to the Davey Mack sports program era of 2012, where for some reason, uh, me, you, Sean Barry, and uh, Chris Pepper Stanley got the chant, suck it, fuck, suck it, fuck. Every single week we were chanting suck yeah. it, fuck. It you didn't do that on a special delivery with Sam and Dave, but uh, maybe maybe once or twice. I was, oh, you're I, right. You're right. I think it's I don't know if it was Sam that. I Way, way back in the day, I knew that. But it uh, also the, went to DMSP as well. It went well. everywhere, yes. The yes. weirdest thing is when females would chant it to me. And that <laughs> happened on more than one occasion or uh, occasion where, or like a female would tweet out SNF. And I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure she's not tweeting out Sunday Night Football to play <laughs> Patty Side Dave. Oh, um, That's how so Flutie got the job, right? Soccer movie. <laughs> best soccer movie. You know what? I, 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 the first thing that pops into my head is Shaolin Soccer. Which Look is like, you. it's this kung fu soccer movie, which kind of like these guys have these powers. So it's almost like Street Fighter meets a sports movie. Look really at fun and you. crazy. There's definitely. That is, see, come on. This is why you have Jermaine Lassier, AKA the G Baby, on your show, because you're not going to get a movie like that. That's insane. Because I had one, and I actually thought mine was going to beat yours. But I am a well, what is stupid, bedheaded fucking asshole. I honestly, I couldn't. That, that took me a second to think about it. Because the first thing you pop in your head is like, bend it like Beckham, which is good. But that was my Victory, vote. starring Michael Caine and Sylvester it's, Stallone. That's the correct answer. Fucking yeah. great-ass movie where they were a soccer team, but also had to escape. What, what was it, Roy? Like World War II? Yeah, it was World War II. It was Nazi Germany. It was Nazi Germany, and they and like the Americans had to like play the soccer game, but also like figure out how to escape this. Like it was like Great Escape meets fucking soccer. I've never seen it, and I know it because I worked at a video store for like twenty years growing up, so I know exactly what the box looks like oh, in my head. Check it, it out, man. Now I gotta check see it. it yeah, out. I know you're totally right. It's Great Escape meets fucking soccer, I mean, baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's Nazis. It's, it's not. Nazis. It's good. It's, it's good. Does anyone movie. have any others? Um, uh, uh, does it beat this though, Dave? If you show me oh, fucking ladybugs, oh. you piece of shit. That's a I, damn. I wish I ladybugs is actually pretty good. Ladybugs I mean, is pretty good. Not a bad movie, David. Watch it again. You'll be no, surprised. It's a, it's a it's a terrible movie, but I, I know. loved it growing up. What is he talking about? Well, this isn't a soccer movie, is it, Robert? Yeah, this is Shaolin this Soccer. This is the soccer movie. Oh, oh this you. is like, what Jermaine is uh, saying. Yeah, I just I wanted to show you it's the trailer. Like Squid Gamey. Me, see, there you go. This is when did this ball. movie come out? 
early 2000s? I'm watching this movie immediately. Hey, look at this. When look at the this. Dating Max Sports program concludes, I'm putting this movie on. This is what, everything you want. In a, in a, oh, my God. He walked right into the pole. Look at that. Yeah, it's a comedy. Right there. It's great. It's hysterical. I'm laughing already. What is it? That's, that ball is really small. And he crushed it, it with his hand. <laughs> is it subtitled in Asian? Uh, excuse uh, me. Asian's not a language, you fucking white supremacist. Or is it Depend- subtitled in He Cantonese? said it was Korean already. No, I, did, I don't know. I don't know the specific country oh. it's from, but it, why it, did it, I assume that I'm the fucking racist, Roy? Right. I take it right. back. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he said it was Korean. Did I? Did I miss you? No. All right, listen. So. All right. I'd anyway. like to shit around all day, but after Robert said that Ladybugs was the greatest soccer movie of all time, I'm fucking done with this topic now. Okay, I got no more patience for Ladybugs talk. Can Roy I- Harder, you're a big fan of Jermaine, and you always beg yeah. me, Davey yeah. Mac. Caleb, how come you fucking hog the interview with Jermaine? Yeah. It, it, it's like I don't even exist. So, okay, big guy. Go, you, I, you've prepared a few questions. Maybe randomly I'll go to you, you know. Okay, sure. If, um, if you behave, go ahead. Okay, well, hello, Jermaine. A um, right. w- question is actually Star Wars related. Um, okay. Why do they call him Grogu? He doesn't seem to grow. And thankfully, I see no goo. Disgusting. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I hope he's not implying jism. That's what it sounded like. But to be it fair, just, I mean, there is, there is a uh, goo when, when they go get the egg in the episode, he kind of goo goos and gagas, right? He's a baby. Oh, um, he does do that. Uh, right? And we haven't seen him grow. Cause it's been like, he, he's, it hasn't been that long. He's and a different really, kind. The, the Yodas don't grow that much, Roy. Jesus. Right. Do well, we know they just that? Go really slowly. Yeah. Or is it possible Yoda just had a birth defect and he didn't grow? Well, there's also no Yaddle. Everybody's favorite is Yaddle. R.I.P. Job, uh, J- Jermaine, real quick. I'm not trying to plug myself, but Yaddle, Yaddle. I know it's blowing up. It's all I see everybody talking about. Uh, well, and, and by everybody, I mean you. But that's about <laughs> <it>. Yaddle, Yaddle. <laughs> I am telling you, is actually getting a little bit of buzz in the Star Dude. Wars podcasting community because I have not lied to people. Myself and Jared Fishman. Do it. White Jared, the original uh, host of Special Delivery and East Side Dave show and so on and so forth. And he is a big Star Wars fan. And we scream at each other. But I say it's basically two Quentin Tarantino fans discussing Star Wars for Mm -hmm. 45 minutes to an hour. But I had no idea that Tales from the Jedi, the uh, Star Wars six part Mm -hmm. animated uh, series that came out was going to feature Yaddle so prominently. And that uh, all of a sudden, a uh, Yaddle Channel would be getting a bump up. Shout outs on several different Star Wars podcasts. I, I, I thought about it, too, and I saw Yaddle on there. You know, you got some more La- Yaddle backstory. Now we know what Yaddle sounds like. We know how Yaddle died. I mean, it's perfect. It's Yaddle's world. I feel like they created those yeah, that Yaddle episode on uh, Tales of the Jedi just for the Dave man. Someone said someone, someone. Well, it was the Dave man, but it was Dave Filoni. So, so. <laughs> um, <laughs> by the way, G baby, if you ever, if you want to do a Star Wars show, I also came up with another one in the uh, Yaddle channel vicinity and yeah. you little weasels online. Don't try to trademark or copyright write it. It's been copyright and trademarked already. But Jermaine, if you're ever dying to do a Star Wars show, uh, talking Tarkin. I, I came up with that the other night. Talking Tarkin. Yeah. That's so good. I feel like nobody's done that. I feel like they have. There has to be. There's no talking Tarkin. I looked it up, and there was um, there no Yaddle channel. There you go. So uh, I'm just uh, po- uh, throwing that out there to you. It's a good um, name. Hey, I gotta tell you guys real quick. So my kids are of the age where they're now quibbling with me on literally every single fucking thing I say, and I need to discuss this with you gentlemen. I had a, uh, my birthday party was uh, this past Sunday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, David. Happy birthday, Dave. See, I don't think not one single one of you motherfuckers was going to say happy birthday until I put my arms up begging for <laughs> what I was hoping for was applause or something. I'm just glad I said it first. I also <laughs> I said it on your birthday. Barely. And I got you what you got me. I gave me a thousand dollars. So my mom always asks after the cake. Give us a highlight of the past year. You always have to give Beanie Mac a highlight of what this past year of your life was. From November 1st of 2021 to October 31st of 2022. Okay? So I said, well, 
uh, by the way, uh, I said, uh, well, uh, going, my, my daughter started high school and she does the color guard, which is the uh, people who do spin the flags. Oh, yeah, yeah. During okay. the football games. Yeah. All right. Can you believe this, Jermaine? I, I can't believe you just said your daughter's in high school. I, I, I can't either. And she she does the uh, the flags. No, seriously, I I look and I I, be, I believe it. It's the it's the fact that that means that like I've known you and your family for like twenty years. I, it's crazy. It's crazy. And so I go. Um, so my mom says one of the highlights. I wanted to be nice. I, I tried to make it about the kids, not me. So I said to the my mom, I said, "Well, going to Juliana's first uh, game, her first football game, where she was waving the flags there." And you know what she said? She goes. Well, didn't you leave in the third quarter? <laughs> oh, dear. It was a blowout. Like, what did you do? The, the, the outcome was... First right? of all, Jermaine is right. <laughs> it was fucking 35 to 7. Secondly, morning radio guy, WRATFM, where we're getting number one ratings each and every goddamn book, and I'm becoming a massive star for Beasley Media. Um, I got to get up at 4.30 in the morning. The game was just going on and on. It was like 9.45 at night, for Christ's sakes. Why did they start the, They start these games later than the Amazon Prime Thursday night football game? Yeah. Were they? I mean, why do they start sports so late? Because the I'm parents done. have to work. Oh. I know they even say West Coast bullshit. But not I mean, in high school yet. Yeah, high school football, that does not count. It, it, it shouldn't be the case. And also, like, Jermaine, you live on the West Coast. I live on the East Coast. Would you be okay if the NBA Finals, say, started at 4 p.m. on your time? Oh, I'd love it. I would love it. The West Coast would love it. They just said it. Yes. My point is, what, 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 you know, 7 p.m. Or, okay, fine. It's got to be prime time. 8 p.m. Jermaine, would you be cool with a 5 p.m. NBA Finals? Uh, I, I also work from home. If I didn't work, if I was commuting and I, and I missed the first half because I had to drive. Oh, come on. Traffic, you figure out a way. Everyone's got phones. Everyone's Radio. got computers no, right. and iPods. Right. No, but I mean, there's a zillion ways to, to keep your eye on the fucking game. And then you get home. Everyone wants this. Anyway, Jules, so I say to her, I go, uh, well, I was there for the three quarters and I saw the performance at halftime. The whole thing was to see you at halftime. It's all about halftime. You know what she says? What? Well, you left I early, though. I mean, if it's really a highlight, you wouldn't have left early. I go, Jesus, fuck. Oh, so shit. then I, so so then I go and okay and now and, and now mom let me give me silver spoon. Now I go I guess I go let me give me highlight number two. I go you know I haven't high uh, uh Stanley wanted to get out there and trick or treat this year. I said you know what uh, usually because uh, for whatever reason the, the Halloweens have fallen on bad times for me usually Davy Mac sports programs or Eastside Dave shows or something is going on uh, the rat W R A T. But this year I was able to do it. So I said, okay, let's get out there. And like I said, I'm, I'm like a, a, a football coach um, with Halloween. I'm very intense because I can't trick or treat myself, but I'll be barking orders to Stanley like, this house, Stanley, this house right here. I see a pumpkin and the lights on. Okay, skip this house. No lights, no cars in the driveway. That house over there has got a jack-o'-lantern and a ghost hanging from the tree. Let's go, Stanley. Let's go. All right, cross the street. Cross the street. That house looks good. Let's go to that house. And I'm doing this head coaching where I'm screaming at him which houses to go to and which houses to avoid. And it's this whole entire fucking game that we play. It's like uh, the fourth quarter in the Super Bowl, only with candy. And I had a great time doing it. I had tremendous fun. So I give that highlight. That was my second highlight. Now it's Stanley's turn to quibble. He goes, well, technically that wasn't last year because it just happened. Now we, at this point, even my mom is saying, no, it's eligible. It's, it's, it's November 1st of 2021 to Halloween of 2022. By the way, the amount of rules in this fucking stew, this little tradition is insane. It's a 35 year tradition that I've been doing with my family and it's getting harder. We used to be able to just give the highlight and that was on. Now I'm giving highlights and I have to have a goddamn fucking debate at Harvard to back up my thesis of why my fucking highlights meet the standards of my two goddamn quibbling children. When, 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 when did this happen? You become a teenager and you quibble? I think oh, so. shit. <laughs> As the one who was most recently a teenager, Dave, can I give you a little advice on how some of my friends' parents solve this issue? Yeah. So so you like to imbibe 
on the weekends you like to have a drink or two, right? Uh, my no, friends on no, no, Friday. On Friday. Maybe. Friday is my occasional day. My, my friend Anthony's dad was like that. He would have a f- 17 shots of Jameson or whatever, and you'd walk upstairs, and he would just be holding his gun, and he'd just be, like, scratching his head with it. Then he'd point it at you and be like, you know, I could just blow you away, or I could just blow me away, and just kind of the, the craziness of knowing that man always had a gun kept us in line. Like you weren't fucking up at Anthony's house, and maybe it's time for the Mac household to get a gun. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say no on that one. Um, that would be a big things, mistake. The, things get dark on the Davy Mac Sports Card from time to time. We're like, hey, it's really and then it's it's, it's yeah. Jameson and and bullets. Yeah. Oh my god! A lot of bullet talk, apparently. Oh, a lot of gun talk. I don't know how how it happened. He Roy, also liked um, that no. white powder Roy had at the beginning of the exactly, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but 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 it's 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 crazy that my kids are arguing my own highlights, my own yearly highlights that my mom forces us to do year in and year out. Dave, wait till they turn sixteen and seventeen. It's a whole other level, dude. Really? Yeah, you're not going to be doing that that podcast with anyone anymore. They're not going to want anything to do with you. I don't you wait, talk like, about Stanley, my 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 the Eastside David Sun wrestling show. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable, man. Once no, they no, hit no, 16, no, 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 no. You know that we're, we're we've done this show for seven years at this David, point, almost a hundred episodes. Seven years, we're we're never giving this up. Mark no. my words, David. Mark my words. Teenagers. Oh, well, here's what I'm going to say. Do you want anything paid for? For the rest of your life, <laughs> then once a month your ass can do a fucking podcast. Your ass can sit next to the old man for literally a half an hour once a month in front of this goddamn microphone. Dave, you know you got to do. You got to do what you got to do is you, you degrade the show prep. Obviously, just keep a note in your phone with highlights, and then you do the show prep. So you get to your birthday, and you're like, "Oh, that was good. That was good." Boom. That yes. was see. That's smart. Very Why don't I think of these things? Because she does this. We have the same traditions every single year. And every year I know that I got to give my highlight, my highlight of the year. And, and, and Jermaine, it's a pleasure having you on the show. Oh, yeah, this is why with no kids, I can think of these things, you know, I have time nine, to think about it. Listen, io9.com for more for, for plenty of Jermaine Lassier brilliance. It's it. not, let, let, let me ask you a question then. Let's get into a little uh, uh, movie thing here, right here. Let's get into a little Star Wars talk for a second. I'm loving Andor very much. Okay. I yeah. love it ridiculously much. And there are times where, like, I'll watch the episodes back to back because I didn't catch everything the first episode. I'm just being honest. Like, there's a lot of stuff that I'm like, I'm not 100% sure, you know, what they're talking about, but I love the show. Nonetheless, when people say it's the first adult Star Wars series, it's not because there's all kinds of nudity or cursing going on. It's because the level of, you know, of sophistication yeah. and the complexity of the plots and the subplots and the content is just higher than what you would expect. Jermaine Lassier, enough about me. What are your opinions of Andor? I mean, I agree with you 100%. I think my, I was... I got to see the first couple episodes early. And so they gave us the first four episodes and the first two episodes. I was really worried. I was like, I don't know. I just, the, the, the pacing of it, the not much happened plot wise. And it wasn't until that third episode where he kind of meets stone scars, Gar's character, Luther. And you sort of be like, Oh, this is the trajectory we're going on. And then I was all in. And since then, every episode I almost has almost gotten better every time. And I think what's excellent about it is that now, if you look back at it, it's going to be a basically a 12 hour movie. It's yeah. basically like six, two hour movies or basically, or, you know, whatever, three, four hour, four, three hour movies is more like it. But like, and I think it's because the guy who's writing most of it, running it, Tony Gilroy, who helped fix Rogue One and he did Michael Clayton. He wrote all the Bourne movies. I love uh, Michael Clayton, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, and that was his like directorial debut. He's amazing. I love and, that. Uh, he's from the East Coast. He's from uh, up Orange County, New York, which is where I'm from, uh, right up north oh. um, from you guys. Tony Gilroy, but yeah, he, he he just has an understanding of story that these other guys don't. And I love John Favreau and Dave Filoni, but they're really worried about you know connections and make showing you characters that you've seen before. And I love that. But this show, yeah, this show doesn't have to be Star Wars. The fact there's there's aliens walking around doesn't help anything. The fact that the guy has a blaster instead of a real gun doesn't help anything. That he's in prison with electric that doesn't mean it's just that's just an extra layer of cool. You know, it's really like mm. it's about this character, and especially that you know. 
where he goes, right? We know that mm -hmm. he's going to be a huge part of the rebellion. Mm -hmm. He's going to be part of the mission to get the Death Star plans. He's going to give his life for that. Like, so to see like him go from like this kid who's just like, you know, looking for his sister and really kind of, and you can see him very slowly getting more and more interested in the world. I, I, yeah, I find it fascinating. And uh, I, I really like it. I've actually, mm -hmm. I've seen the next episode too. I got to see that a little early. The one from this episode week. 10, episode 10. Phenomenal, phenomenal. If it was the finale of the series, you'd be like, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, but this still, has got me excited now. But there's Jermaine. still two more after this week. I know. So, we we uh, have, yeah, we have three in total. Um, yeah. I think it's a brilliant show. I I I think that um, I'm getting enough Star Wars. So I, I that 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 was the complaint that I saw online a little bit of there's not enough Star Wars. Um, there's plenty of Star Wars. We've gotten plenty. we we've gotten stormtroopers and we've gotten you know tie fighters and we've gotten these things. But most importantly, we are getting one of the most fascinating looks at imperial bureaucracy yeah. ever. And, you know, you just like in, you know, in real life, you know, there's the president, right? But then Americans in World War II or this, that, they would know the superstar generals. They would know the Dwight Eisenhower's or the yeah. MacArthur's or the Patton's and stuff like that. And yet in Star Wars, it really is just, Emperor Vader, but you, there must be, you know, military superstars, great generals, great commanders, great uh, investigators. And that's what this is. This is an Imperial investigation team that is, ab that is really powerful, but you know, you can't cover everything in a right. Star Wars movie. There's no reason to talk to us about some Imperial investigation team, but this is the avenue for it. And it's fascinating stuff. Every time that that old man, Imperial, makes them debate when he had the blonde woman and the guy debate. Yeah. Uh, my God, this was brilliant. And I actually disagree with people who didn't feel like it was Star Wars. I felt it was 100% Star Wars. Jermaine, in episode four, in A New Hope, we get almost a similar scene when they're at that Imperial you know, press conference and they're talking and the and commanders are going back and forth. And, you know, we don't have enough, enough you know, the, the rebel Alliance will grow with support if we can. And they're, and they're, they're debating. They're yeah. actually doing what we just saw. So I, I think there's plenty of star Wars in it. And here is what I need to say to star Wars fans. I feel like the star, the Disney plus, live action stuff is incredibly successful. And he, just for me, and this is why Jermaine, for me, everything feels different. Mandalorian, even though the book of Boba Fett was a strong spinoff, whereas Mando felt to me like, you know, a classic prequel, tr uh, no, or, sorry, original trilogy TV series. Yeah. Boba Fett almost reminded me of like a Saturday morning cartoon. Or like the Star Wars holiday special, Come to Life. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. Sure. Yeah, that gave it a different vibe than Mandalorian. And then Obi-Wan Kenobi had a totally different vibe from either of those two shows. And now Andor has got a much different vibe from those three shows. And yet somehow we're seeing some Star Wars fans complain about everything. If you're complaining about everything, maybe you're just not a Star Wars fan anymore because there is a variety that we're getting. I'm into all of it because with the different tonal changes in each and every show, every show is feeling fresh to me. Comments. I, 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 again, I, I agree with you, Diddy Mac. I think, I think what I think, what I find interesting is the other shows though, they all share that DNA. If you have to, they're better if you know Star Wars. Like if you know who Obi-Wan yeah. Kenobi is, or you know who Luke Skywalker is or Princess Leia, that gives you that extra level. And here you don't need to know that Cassian Andor dies on the, you know, uh, whatever planet he dies on, I forget the name, but like, you know, it helps. And so when you see like that Imperial droid Gareth. come up this, Yes, yeah, Scarif, thank you. Scarif. When he comes up, when you see like that Imperial droid, security droid come up stairs, you're like, oh my God, it's K2. Yeah. But it's not K2, but you just, it just, that gives you a little bit extra. He's just like, Gilroy's just giving you the taste here, you know? And so, yeah, I like, so, but that's not what fans want. A lot of the fans want the opposite, the other thing. They want to know, oh, that's the lightsaber that Anakin had who gave to this. And, you know, like, and so it's, it's, it's different things. But and, you'll uh, get that. You get it. And, and I think it's, I, it's okay. odd. There, there is, there is such um, impatience or intolerance for everything that's not, you know, Skywalker saga, 
Kenobi, Vader, Palpatine, and it's like you're gonna go, they'll they'll always give you Jedi and Sith and Force. There's also there's also this I think, and I think, and this is this is this is gonna come off like a, a knock against you, but it is not. It's <laughs> when people when people spend their entire lives and, and me too. So just me, just talking about Star Wars or something else. You always need things to talk about. You can't just be like, oh, that was good. Or whatever you know so and a lot of people are not educated like you myself who can look at a, a star wars show and be like oh i like the character arcs look at the production design that's nice they're like i need the the plot i need plot 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 yeah. this 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 and i need to talk about it on my podcast and more people will like it if i hate it you know that's because true. then they'll hate it and they'll listen and i'll get more views i think a lot of it has to do with you know people on youtube and people on tiktok and all this kind of stuff i think that's where a lot of that hate is kind of manufactured i think a lot of times people are just like and what can I say to kind of piss people off? Agree. And, and also, you know, you know, you, 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 I know you studied film. I studied film. Uh, you know, like a lot of people don't have the education. They don't watch old movies. They've never seen. I'm educated. You know, talk about the Great Escape. People have never seen the Great Escape. If they, you know, like, and oh. just because I, you know, so like, so that if if Tony Gilroy is referencing something like that, you know, in his film, you just you don't appreciate it. You know, so like it's. It's just because there's so many different people. Fandom doesn't have a, it shouldn't have like, you know, barriers, but Agreed. I think that all the kinds always knock up against well, each other. I, and that I, becomes I, 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 I've said it before, Jermaine, the people who go over the top with the criticism, I question, there's many of them that I question whether they're fans at all. And I actually mean that in a legitimate thing of, I, as a, not just Star Wars fan, as a Star Wars, a Marvel, a wrestling, a sports, whatever. Sure. I, whenever there's some sort of, let's say controversy, within any of those businesses, you get a whole bunch of people that come in and make ugly comments and say, well, that's why I'll never watch the NFL. That's why I'll never watch Star Wars. That's why, and you go, you weren't watching the NFL before, brother. You weren't watching Star Wars before. Like, when I mean they're not fans, I mean they legitimately don't even watch the stuff, but they come yeah. in for the conversation because they're angry and it's easier to yeah. be all pissed off on the internet rather than say something positive. It's positive. That's a, it's a, it's another faction of it too, for sure. Right. Um, Roy. Yeah. Jermaine hey, and I were cooking for a second, a very deep conversation. I, I know that you said you had a question. I just. Yep. Uh, give People... a question. And then, and then Jermaine, I have a couple of pitches to you and I'd like you to send these to Kathleen Kennedy or Lucasfilm okay. or somebody. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. No problem. Jermaine. People talk about Captain America's ass a lot. Not me. I'm a Hawkeye guy. That's a sweet round target that I'd like to shoot my arrow into. Was there a question? Second. Or is that just a creepy fucking Marvel comment that you're just going to let uh, hang out there and freak out? Your okay. Seems and like you are always questioning you know, a lot of things. You know how nice he is. And that's the, that's the, that's what you have to say. Well, you're going to do with, with his target. What? That's a sweet round target. I'd like to shoot my arrow into. So is that analogy for butt and your private area? So we had two questions. One's about uh, anal sex. The other one's about ejaculation. <laughs> Roy, Wait, give, really, him a, give him a, okay. Rapid fire. One more question quick right. before okay. we go. All right. Speaking of superheroes. I actually got an idea. No for one it. was. We were speaking Star Wars. You brought up Hawkeye. No, <laughs> and then you said you'd like to have sex with him. Or you implied it. Yeah. Speaking of superheroes, I got an idea for one. Work from home boss guy. I don't actually get in the streets and prevent any crime. I just get on the phone to Superman and Spider-Man and tell them to get to work already. <laughs> and if they can't, I'll find two other tight wearing weirdos who will get the job done. <laughs> I work from home, boss guy. Time for my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the premise of it is that he's, you're he's not Charlie from Charlie's Angels. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're not. Well, he's Roy Harder, Ger, uh, Jermaine. Yeah. Okay. He, yeah. His, his, his superhero shift. The, the only thing that changes is that he, he gets a cup of coffee because this is pretty much how Roy treats uh, his employees. Which is why his employee count is currently at zero. Zero, yeah. I, I don't even count myself as an employee anymore. But I kind of like it. You get on the phone to Superman and Batman, just yell at them to get their asses in gear and start uh, fighting some crime. Come on, start hustling, boys. Yeah. I mean, that to me is good. All right. I, if Roy, I, yeah. I'm going to, on your behalf, I'm going to pitch that to Disney. Uh, Jermaine has con several connections at Disney. I'm not going to give them away. He knows yeah. Kathleen Kennedy very well. They go sailing together 
in Connecticut each and every June. I have multiple sources that say that. <laughs> multiple sources, meaning Roy and Big A Andrew Gold. <laughs> now, here are my pitches. Okay. I feel like with Star Wars, they have not abused cloning technology. I know that there were millions of clones technically, but what I'm saying is that was a one-off. That was an incident. That was this and that. It's time to get the, it's time to bring back somebody and it's time to, 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 to get it going. And we're bringing back Luke Skywalker, Jermaine. I'm sorry, but we are. Hold on. Because phase four of Davy Mac Star Wars goes like phase one, original trilogy, phase two, prequel trilogy, phase three, sequel trilogy. We're marveling this thing. We're marveling it. And phase four, Luke Skywalker's back. Oh, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive, everybody. Okay, hold on. You figure it out, Jermaine. Uh, this is for the, the I don't like, know where we're going from here. Well, I'm going to tell you where no we're idea. going. Yeah, yeah. Luke Skywalker becomes half Dumbledore, half Nick Fury. He creates a beautiful Jedi castle slash academy where he's going to be training the new younglings and the young kids of the Jedi. But he's half, so he's Dumbledore, but he's half Nick Fury because he's going to send people out on missions to fight evil and get the job done. The people who he'll be sending out, Finn. Now, this is where Davey Mac gives, say, gives Disney everything because I'm giving you now full on movies. Finn movie. He was taken as a kid when he was younger. So Finn's story will be going to different planets and rescuing good force sensitive people, probably mostly children, but he's going to fight evil. He's going to fight darkness. He'll fight whoever need, he needs to fight and get these kids, rescue these kids. And then he brings the kids to the Academy. Bam. Number two, a Poe movie. They dumped uh, uh, Patty Jenkins' ass with the X-Wing movie, right? She's out. Yeah. Okay. Ish, ish, yes. So because of that, we now have, that to me was a cool idea, an X-Wing movie, that's, that, that's been dumped. Don't worry, we slide it over to Poe. Poe, X-Wing movie with a super squadron of X-Wings and they're cleaning up the remnants of the First Order. They're going planet to planet system, system, tons of space battles. This ain't gonna be a BS, a bullshit. X-Wing movie, we're gonna have battles in space, battles on the ground, battles in the land, shit, battles in the water, we, I don't know. There's your Poe movie. We're gonna have a new character, maybe one of the characters from Disney Plus will get a third movie. And then by movie number four, so we're getting a, re oh, so, so excuse me, we're getting a Finn movie now, we're getting a Poe movie, probably a third character from Disney Plus uh, uh, thing, and then finally, a huge menacing threat emerges and Luke Skywalker says, we need to get Ray. And we bring in Ray and we're all full on Avengers. Star Wars. Talk, Star Wars. tell me, tell me my Star Wars phase four won't win every Oscar in the book. And I would say conservatively with, the, with this estimate, I'd say probably make it upwards of $10 billion if we released four films. Wow, Dave, I have so much to think about. Um, I think my first thought is obviously in Star Wars, anything can happen, right? You can you can clone, you can do this, you can do that. I do think Luke tried the Academy thing and it didn't work. So I think that kind of undercuts it. I think the Did Jedi he really? tried. Did he really? The, yeah. I mean, he but he, he, he gave up so quick. He kind of took his up and went home. Because one of his pupils was uh, instantly evil. And he was like, I give up. I'm out of here. But then Yoda got him to see that he was being a little bit of a crybaby. Get yeah. out there, start teaching. I and I, I I feel that Yoda's last lesson would have loomed largest. All right, like I said, he could do it. And then I think the other problem though is that the idea of like somebody going out and sending Jedi or or soldiers is just the Jedi Council from the prequels, it's, or even the High Republic. It's just so you took you took the two ideas. <laughs> That have already happened to put them together, which honestly is not a bad idea. That's kind of how this kind of shit works. Oh, okay. And I would love, and 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 in in, in in complete in honesty, I, I want to see these char those characters back. I really do. I don't think it's going to happen. I think like that's the way to make it happen. 
I just gave you the way to make it happen. You do standalone movies, and then they there's a big incident, and they all get back together at the. Uh, it, it, I think I think the way I wanted to, I want to see happen. I just want to see. I just want you to jump like 50, 60 years. But where, right. where is it? Where is where is everything? And then yeah, they can talk about the Luke Skywalker legend, and maybe we get a Daisy Ridley cameo at some point. Any one of those guys, but I don't think it should be about them anymore. I think that trilogy, like as much as I like the first two in different ways and dislike the third one in a lot of ways, I just, I think it's just, it holds too much baggage attention for people. Yeah. Baggage is the best. But, but here's what I would say. I feel like the prequel trilogy had a sufficient amount of baggage. And after 10 or 15 years, the generation of kids who watched that grew up to be people in their twenties and thirties who said, "Whoa, slow down. We love the prequel trilogy. And <laughs> There's an entire generation. For instance, my son's favorite film is episode eight, Last Jedi, right? And my daughter loves episode seven. Um, there's a whole generation of kids that this will be their Star Wars. And w- those kids, when they're 25 and 30 years old, starting to feel a little nostalgic, I feel like they're going to want to see a Finn and a Ray. And that's where Davy Max Star Wars phase four comes in. But I think but I think then, yeah. But now we're talking about 15 years down the road where- we are. I- where John Boyega it, it doesn't hate Star Wars anymore. And where, you know, like, well, he's the only one. I think Daisy Ridley might as well. Oscar Isaac has said he'll come back. You just show him a script and he's there. Oscar's ready to go. <laughs> but yeah, um, I think I think the, like, this, this kind of goes back to our, our, our previous conversation about why Andor is so good. Because Andor is unbeholden to anything. A little bit of Rogue One and that's it. Anything else where Cassie Andor does is no problem. But like an Obi-Wan series or the Mandalorian when it starts dealing with like, Bo-Katan and, and, and all these kind of characters, it is so locked into something where I think that that's where your trilogy idea here, once you bring back clone Luke, you, you just, it's like, you're just locked into too much. Let's wipe the <laughs> slate clean. All right, fine. I, Robert, I, I'm not uh, going to Kathleen on the trip with him. Damn it. Oh no. That was I, my I, big I did, break, Roy. I, I was actually <laughs> hoping to pitch my own Poe movie. Would that be okay? Yes. Cause quickly. it feels like, it feels like we're at the point where, uh, DC was when the Dark Knight came out. It's time for a grittier reboot. So I'm thinking Poe's out on a flight. He has appendicitis. He gets addicted to morphine. He starts okay. writing dark poetry. No. Quoth the Wampu. Just... Nevermore. <laughs> All right. All right. And then he does 17 shots of Jameson. He goes upstairs. <laughs> yeah. He goes into his thing. It's, a, it's an Edgar Allan Poe thing. Right. Jermaine, yes. remember when you said we were educated? This is the most educated sports show of all time. Absolutely. Edgar Allan Poe fucking references. Um, Jermaine, that's not the end of my pitch. Okay. Ooh. Have they have they uh, stated that they're going to make Bo- uh, Book of Boba Fett season two officially? No, nothing official has been made about that. Which is All right, crazy. here we go. No. Jermaine, pass this to Kathleen Kennedy immediately. This is your season two for the Book of Boba Fett. Okay. So the one criticism that I noticed with, and again, I love Book of Boba Fett. I, again, took a very Saturday morning cartoon approach with it. And just, I'm going to have a fun time. Obi-Wan Kenobi was, a, it was emotional. I was emotional with Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen. This wasn't emotional. This was just good old-fashioned fun. And I loved it for that reason. But I did notice the online, the one criticism was people wanted more vintage Boba Fett. See, they always want the vintage stuff. All right, right. fine, fine. Don't worry. You're going to get the vintage stuff. All right? Davey Mac, here's you. You're going to get it. Put me in the Lucasfilm story group already because here it is. Jermaine, season two will be this. We know those huts are still out there. So season two, Boba Fett is officially the guy. He's on Tatooine. He's the mob boss. He's the guy in charge. But it's time for a little bit of a mob war. The huts have decided, you know what? We've been out of Tatooine for a good, you know, six, seven years now. We want what's ours. Tatooine was always ours. We're coming back. And it's not just those two huts, those two huts, maybe, you know, three or four other huts. Maybe it's like, you know, uh, the heads of the five families. We get like five huts around with a whole bunch of soldiers. Okay. And that's the big mob war that he's dealing with in contemporary times. Now, hold on. That's not, that's still going to be the same Book of Boba Fett that we knew from season one. Here is your vintage Boba Fett, you crying little weasels. Everyone needs to see the Empire Strikes Back spacesuit and the thing. This is what we're going to do. 
We're still going to keep the flashback format, but the flashbacks this year will be Boba Fett flashing back to a time where, let's say right before episode four, he's working for Jabba the Hutt and he's remembering a time where Jabba the Hutt was also threatened by five new you know, alien families. And Jabba sent Boba Fett out a la Luca Brazzi and said, you got to take care of this family, this family, this family. So it's two stories. The contemporary story is the older, you know, Boba Fett that we know, helmet off, it could be the same thing, same cast, same everything, going against the huts. But the flashbacks will be Boba working for Jabba, going after Jabba's rivals and really killing them. Brutal strangulations, killings, awful, awful, brutal murders, maybe a decapitation or two. You're the vintage Boba Fett, and we're going to put him in the Empire Strikes Back outfit. Bam! Talk to me. Tell me this season two ain't gold, daddy. So should I just call you Francis? Because you just took go- just the Godfather 2, Dave. Godfather two. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, you're ripping off genius. So that's okay. All right, but um, didn't they say that they were heavily inspired by the Godfather? Yeah. So you do Godfather 2. Right, so it. they did Godfather 1 and I'm doing Godfather 2. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I... And I and I, I said this before in the program. I honestly think vintage Boba Fett that everyone wants. You're absolutely right. It's just the Mandalorian. It's just you want to yeah. see a dude going around getting people. So you get that's that. That's why show. we can't. Yeah, that's why they can't, in my opinion, have a Boba Fett movie because Mando has that now. Yeah, but- it's hard, and it's so hard. Boba Fett. Honestly, the other thing with Boba Fett is that that time period you're talking about. Maybe not specifically before A New Hope, but like in the sequel, in the original trilogy, there's like a million comics and stuff that are canon now about what he did and what he didn't do. Like he fought Luke Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi's like uh, hut looking for Clone War shit. Like this all yeah. happened in canon. If you look, read some of the comics and stuff. So I think again, you're coming up against it's really hard to thread that needle. No, no. Roy would say like Hawkeye. Didn't yeah. they just make an announcement though that they are going to not necessarily even with Disney published comic books that they have, they said that they're not going to. Um, you know, limit their creator, like new future storytellers in Star Wars won't have to pay attention to even their own comic book canon. Well, th- that, I think that nobody's come out and like said that, but I oh, think that's okay. probably implied if they jump ahead. It's like, right, I don't know if you've read any of the High Republic books. I, I happen to have one sitting right no, here. No, because I, I didn't want to play that game. Dude, it's, but here, here's the thing. They're awesome because it is, it is, it, it's, a bunch of Jedi who have like, th- there's no story that beholds them to anything. There's a whole, there aren't Sith. They're bit by doing these whole other bad guys. And there's little tints here and there. Yoda's still around. Cause it's, he was, he trained Jedi for 800 years. It doesn't mean he only lived for 800 years. And true. Th- and so like, you just get a real sense of like a, a, a star Wars that is unbeholden to the, these blinders of all the other content. So I think like, like I know you, you definitely read that like, you know, some of the things they're looking at in the head are, are maybe some Damon Lindelof movie or a Taika yes. Waititi movie and all these things. I don't know anything about the plots of those things, but what I do know is I would bet anything they're way out in, in, a, yeah. in advance where they don't have to do anything. They don't have to go to the story group and be like, oh, yeah. Oh, no, can, well, I say, can I say this because right. of this? And, you know, you know, like, so. Taika Waititi, I believe, said... Um, he he wouldn't do a Star Wars right. that was dependent on characters that he would like to do a Star Wars that was totally fresh, was from a different corner of the galaxy, even maybe even the universe. Yeah. And uh, just do something totally, totally uh, unique, which, again, I have no problem. Roy. Darth what do you want to say? Jermaine and I were talking. Well, quick one. Darth Vader. You think he ever slips into something a bit more comfortable, like a pair of black umbros? I wear leather a lot, like Vader, but if I wear it all the time, my balls over sweat and I okay. get a yeast infection in my groin area. All right, that's enough. We need to get Roy a back to tank. Uh, I, know, I mean, Roy, you have to get a back to tank. Do you know what one of those are? Uh, no, I don't know what that oh, is. Actually, you don't watch Star Wars? Uh, uh, not, not. Remember the tank, the, last of water that, years. That, the, the, the tank of water that heals all the characters. Luke Skywalker oh, uses one in Empire Strikes Luke Back. Luke Skywalker in Empire Strikes Back. I remember now. Okay. Yeah, I'd like one of those. You, you know, sub, of those, so. subconsciously, anytime I'm in lots of pain, 
I take a very long bath and I put those that bath uh, salt in it. And I swear to God, I think probably on Freudian level, I got that from Luke Skywalker in the back to tank in Empire. <laughs> I'm like, now now that I think about it, it's like, that's something that I've been doing since a kid. If, if I like injure my leg or my back or something, I take a bath with, with, with the bath salts, as opposed to Roy Harder who eats the bath salts, Jermaine. Right. They um, go in your yeah, in your mouth, not in your tub. <laughs> Jermaine, let's discuss a little Marvel for a second. I loved Werewolf by Night. I don't know if you saw it. Saw it. You saw it. What 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 did you think? Because it was a big deal because Michael Giancchino yeah. directed it, and, and and Roy, you should know that name because Michael Giancchino is one of the most celebrated movie composers in the yeah. business. He did yeah. Lost. He did Star Wars Rogue One. He's oh, I know exactly. Pixar. Yeah, he's done the Avengers. Yep. He's done tons of Pixar. The guy, the guy does everything Disney basically. But this is the first time. So it would be like John Williams directing a film. This is the first time he directed yeah. anything. Jermaine. Yeah. Well, uh, not only did I see it, Dave, I was at the first ever screening of it in the big screen, and I talked to Michael the next day about it because so. Whoa! I, this is this is what Boy, I do, you guys. He yeah. just talked to Michael Giancchino. Are you aware of this? Uh, he just informed me, David. <laughs> <laughs> That's no, true. but but I uh, but I thought it was great. I thought it was it was me too. We were just talking about not being beholden to any other story, right? Werewolf by Night takes place in the MCU. You see the Avengers in that first shot, and then it's like here's our own story: new monsters, new kind of lore. It all just is its movie, and you enjoy it. And then at the end, if you want to think about like, well, when did that take place? Do those people whatever? You can think about it. But as a story, it just works as like a fun little it horror was fun. episode. I loved so, it. And so that's what, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very cool. It's very cool. And it you was a good, you know, Roy, yeah. go check that out. You have Disney plus, or are you still uh, a big and cheapskate? I'm a cheapskate. Yeah. I'll give you my Jesus password Christ. after the episode. Yeah. Dave, just give me your password. This is show prep. You write it off. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> we don't password share here. All right, Roy, give him a, give him a question quickly, quickly. All right. I actually, I got a quick question about Goonies. Oh, I love I, the Goonies. That's one of my favorites. I noticed that Sloth wears a Superman shirt. Is that because Richard Donner, who directed Goonies, also directed Superman? And mm, hold on, Jermaine. Oh no, guys, I just shit myself. I have to take a break for a second. Please excuse my absence. Oh my God. Is he coming back with a baby Ruth? No, I don't think, to... I'm not sure he's coming back. That this, I, I'm not sure this one was planned. Oh, um, know. let's discuss, uh, well, I actually, there's a good connection with the Donner. He you, says yeah, I know the, 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 it was the first time he had ever given a question that was sensical. I mean, sensical in the fact that the question was sensical I, in the realm of the show has nothing to do with anything. It would be like, no, you're you know, right. Like, well, is like, the, let's, the, let's talk about sushi. You'd be like, what is that, like <laughs> but uh, is that why Sloth had the Goonie shirt because of Richard Donner directed? I think I've Superman? heard that. I think I've heard that. Yeah, I think that's probably part of it. I think also, obviously, it plays into his kind of character. But uh, they probably all got these, the rights because of that. Oh, all all these re Oh God, that was disgusting, man. We have fucking Jermaine here. He's the number one film critic in the world, and he just told you 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 were making sense for a change. Even G, G Baby agreed on that one. But then you say I got a shit, and you just run away. Nature calls, David. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I know. Well, it's embarrassing. I, tell me about it. Yeah, I'm yeah, the one who just shits myself. This is Siskel and Ebert. I never heard Gene Siskel say, I got a shit, Roger. Well, good thing we're on Zoom. Otherwise, at least you don't have to smell it now. Like <laughs> I do. Jeez. They, they didn't have the balls to go live like you guys. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Siskel and Ebert not say that. That's <laughs> really, it's a good point. Every time we go live on YouTube, I try to talk Robert out of it. I'm like, do we have to do it live this week? He's like, we're, we're, we're getting lots of views. It's actually been pretty good. I'm like, you, do we have to though? Because I don't know what's going to happen with Roy. He's, he's, he's interviewing a goddamn fucking five-star guest in Jermaine Lachier, and he says, I got a shit. Maybe that's what the people want though, Dave. Maybe that's G what baby. Want. Yeah. G baby. Let's talk Turkey. Black yeah. Panther out yeah. this week. Yeah. What is this movie going to do? I'm talking box office wise. I'm also talking critically wise and I'm talking audience wise, Black Panther slash Marvel audience wise, three separate categories. What's this movie going to do? 
All right. Well, you know, as you guys know, I have this. Uh, I have to leave a little bit early today. It's because I'm going to see Black Panther again. I've already Ooh. seen it. I'm seeing it again. Look at this because- big shot. Hollywood big shot, Jermaine. Let's see. I Twice for it. free before it comes out. That's the kind of asshole <laughs> I am. No, it's because. Because you never, I got to see it so early, I wrote my review. You never get to see a movie twice before writing a review. It's like the best luxury in the world. So it, so I have a review written. I'm going to go see it again tonight. And then the review comes out Tuesday morning. Uh, box office, massive. It's going to be probably the second biggest movie of the year uh, behind Top Gun. I, th- I think Top Gun will kind of hold that event um, but once we get towards the end once of the run. And I think Avatar, which comes out after it, is probably going to be right underneath there by a little bit, probably like number three. So this is going to be huge. I mean, everybody loves – the first one was such a cultural milestone, and everybody now – it's kind of like Grimly, the passing of Heath Ledger kind of gave Dark Knight a bump. The passing of Chadwick Boseman is going to give this a bump. Who People want to know, who's the next Black Panther? How do you gotcha. deal with this? And all this kind of thing. So I think people are curious about that. And then uh, – so I think it's going to be a huge hit. Uh, critically, um, it's it's going to be it's going to be you're looking at like an 85 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's a little long and it's a little tiny bit convoluted, but like it all comes together. And it's a, it's just because Ryan Coogler, who wrote and directed it, it's only his fourth movie, and the dude's made banger after banger. Even Fruitvale Station is a very small, incredibly powerful movie. Creed, obviously, David Max Brooks program, one of the greatest sports movies of all time. <laughs> <laughs> and then, which I, I, I sincerely believe, and then. And then the first Black Panther, which is excellent. I think this is, a, is the most complex movie he's ever done. There's a lot of there's a lot of characters. There's a lot of story. It's got to deal with the passing of of T'Challa. It's got to deal with who's the new Black Panther. It's so much going on. He doesn't quite hit that balance, but he hits about you know it's like nine out of ten on the balance. So I think you're looking at about a nine out of ten on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going to give it a positive review when it comes out. I love the first one. Wait, is uh, it's the same director? Yes, Ryan. This is his. Yeah, his. He did both of these. Um, and like I said, he's the same guy who did Creed one. Yeah, he's he's good. He's good. He's he's, he's, he's really good. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. And good. then and the third thing was MCU wise. Um, it is not a movie that's as connected to the other movies because it has to kind of uh li- live on its own. But if you've seen the first movie, the 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 things that happened in that movie really play a big part here. The decisions the characters made, the fact that Wakanda comes out to the world. That happened, and they were like, hey, we're this big freaking nation, and then Thanos happened. So they didn't have really had time to deal with that. Like, what does the world think now? Oh, we have this superpower in Africa we never heard about. So that's a kind of an MCU thing. And then the bad guys in this movie are this whole new race of people called the Talokan who live underwater, which is awesome, A. They're led by Namor, the Sid Mariner, who's like one of the first Marvel characters of all time. And that is, it's a very powerful, interesting storyline and connection between the two countries. And I think um, they're going to, I put a story up today that they're going to be playing a big role going ahead in the phase five and phase six. Okay. So, and then, and then in my final tease about MCU connections, it's not, like I said, it's not the lot, but there kind of is always when you think about this, the end credit scene to this movie is my favorite ever in any Marvel movie. And it's not because it has its massive, massive tease though. It does. It is the most, it is the perfect ending to this movie. Um, in okay. an emotional and a narrative way. Yeah. I think people are just going to have people talking. Um, cool. So I think, uh, I, I can't say enough good things about it. So it's a good um, movie. So you, yeah. uh, you're you going to recommend it. Okay, I, I'll I'm going to recommend it, it and I'm going to see it again in about an hour. So <laughs> I will absolutely be checking it. Roy, quickly. He's got to yeah. leave. We, we have him for six minutes and then we're out of here. Okay, Tremaine, I'm a simple man. I like butter in my ass and lollipops in my ass. That's what? why I think- Lloyd Gondoli? They, All right. I think they finally need to make an R-rated sure. Pixar movie. And I got the first project, Charging Mr. Pink. It's oh, about a God. dildo that is charging and comes to life when the power socket is hit by lightning. <laughs> what do you think, Jermaine? <laughs> Jermaine, don't, I, 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 you don't want to. First of all, the quote from Boogie Nights <laughs> is, I like butter in my ass and lollipops in my mouth. You that's said, just me, that's the kind of guy I am. Yeah, no, but but uh, Roy said I like butter in my ass and lollipops in my ass. <laughs> That's just me, Dave. That's the kind of guy I am. So you there doubled you down on it, but that wasn't the quote from Boogie Nights. It's okay. Educated, we're educated here. We need to <laughs> the Boogie Nights. He quote. wanted both. He wanted the butter and the <laughs> lollipops in his ass. Sure, sure. <laughs> Jermaine, um, the, you know what, Roy? Get to your next question. Sure. I am personally right. offended, and I really feel quick. Like, yeah, really quick. I'm sorry, Jermaine. Um, speaking, going back to Star Wars, 
Was Han Solo essentially the inventor of the turducken in Empire Strikes Back? Oh. The scene where Han's Han put Luke into that snow camel. Yeah, we know. He just stuffed her in there. Um, it's the same idea. We know what the scene is, and it's a tauntaun. Uh, Jermaine. I literally had the Funko Pop right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's an insane point, but it's not the worst point he's made tonight. Is no, no, he's made some really bad points. I mean, but um, yeah, he's made specifically awful. at uh Hawkeye, yes. Uh, and uh, yeah. no, Han Solo uh, putting Luke, you know, who is going to be cloned. Wait, wait, Dave, that's where they get the DNA from Luke is the Tauntaun who's frozen on Hoth. Hell yes, like there the is. Amber in Jurassic Park, <laughs> the Tauntaun's <laughs> been frozen. And the DNA. Now you're with me, pal. I'm in it. I'm in Listen, it. There it is. Hey, we there we open on Hoth. We open on Hoth. Baby Mac needs a co The droid, droid is cutting it up, and it's just it's the same opening of Jurassic Park. <laughs> That's the best. Okay, dude, I am 50-50. You get us a meeting with Kathleen Kennedy. Come on, baby. Let's go. It's me and you. We're, we're, we're going to co-write the next Star Wars movie. I'm telling you, Star Wars story, oh story group. All right, uh, Roy, what was your final question? You said you had an eighth one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do you still like me, Jermaine? Okay. Oh, boy. Roy, yes. I see. Okay, good. Even though you shit your pants today. Yeah. Um, Lots of weirdness happened, but at least you got Jermaine and I <laughs> to, to figure out how we can get Luke cloned. Because yeah. without your, your ridiculous question, we wouldn't have had that frozen tauntaun. You're very welcome, guys. <laughs> um, that's going to do it, brother. Uh, you're you're, you're get... the best. It, this this was an act. Oh, yeah. Robert had the question, actually. G oh, baby, sorry. have you seen the trailers for Violent Night yet? Uh, I have seen the trailers for Violent Night. I'm seeing it on Wednesday. Oh, nice. Did you get the feeling of the opening scene of Scrooge? It felt very similar to the night the reindeer died. For Dave, in case you don't know, and Roy, it's basically a movie where Santa rescues somebody in theory, from a kidnapping. Oh, the, the guy from Stranger Things plays Santa, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. I, I saw a quick commercial for this. What are your yeah. thoughts? Is, 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 is it gonna... So you're saying... They, I, they, I don't they, know. They, that, they, I don't they, know. They, I've heard of that movie, Rob, but I haven't seen that. I, I mean, I just... I, I'm a I'm a kind of a basic bitch when it comes to a lot of the horror stuff, so I, I kind of just saw Die Hard That's... with Santa Claus, you know, because yep, and... it's a bunch of people who are held hostage, and he kind of runs around the house and tries to save them. Um, but if there's another cool... There are cool horror Santa Claus movies, so... This what is yeah. it, Night, the Knights of like, Reindeer? That's and a I, trailer from Scrooge where it's basically an action movie. Oh, right. Movie. Oh, okay. The so oh, it yeah, felt yeah. Like, like a parallel. It seems yes. I love Die Hard. That's my favorite Christmas no, and movie, I, and so I love I'm Scrooge looking forward and I, to now it. Now I, like I feel like an asshole for not remembering that's a Scrooge reference. Silent I Night, Deadly Night is one that was a good Santa Claus horror movie. But if you want to see one of the best, the scariest Christmas horror things ever, the original run of tales from the crypt on oh, yeah. hbo started with an hour and a half three part special and one of the parts was a like serial killing santa and it scared the fuck yeah. out of me now i saw it when i was 12 and honestly I, I wouldn't even know how to chase it down i guess maybe amazon prime would have but we're, we're talking the og right. original run of tales from the crypt on hbo the very first episode, I'm pretty sure, had this uh, Santa Claus sketch, and it was the scariest thing with Santa ever. Anyway, look, we got to get Jermaine out of here, brothers. Yeah. Jermaine Lassier. io9.com is the website. Jermaine Lassier is the single greatest film and television writer in the United States of America. I've said this before, and I mean it. He's the only one I read. With all due respect, Siskel and Ebert are pushing daisies. They're taking the dirt nap. They're not there. I used to love them. Well, more Roger Ebert than the other one. He seemed a little bit nasty to me. But Ebert <laughs> sounded seemed like a fat, jolly, no, nice guy. Jermaine is, he, he's the best of the film critic because he's not trying to hate. He's trying to inform. And I take his information and I run with it because it's always good. Okay. Thank you very much, Dave. It was great to be here. Roy, so like you. Uh, thank you for everything. Dave, you're the best. And uh, see you guys in the new year. We'll talk some uh, talk some more to sports. We'll talk some more to movies. That's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to do a little Oscar buzz in 2023, my friend. That's the next time we'll speak to you. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's and, uh, knock it down. 
Jermaine Lassier is the greatest. Roy Harder, thank you. Robert, thank you. The DMSP audience who uh, watched live, even though we didn't really plug it. Thank you very much. And uh, I'm the Dave Man. It's David Max Sports Program. Good night, everybody. <laughs>